Hey guys, what's up? Again, my name is Alex. I graduated with degrees in math and computer science, and what I really like to apply it to is sports betting. I like to beat sports books and win at sports betting. So what we're going to talk about in this video is sports betting bankroll management and also how to build up a sports betting bankroll. So we've discussed arbitrage in other videos, right? Arbitrage is just making risk-free returns between two sports books. You know, over 39 points, under 39 points in the Titans versus Colts game. You can get minus 278 on the over on BetMGM. You can get plus 320 on Twin Spires or Unibet on the under 39 points. You can lock in a risk-free 2.65%, right? That is a great way to get into sports betting and start to build your sports betting bankroll. But once you venture into positive expected value betting, a form of betting that actually has risk, a common question people have is, okay, how much should I be betting on each opportunity? So there are a couple ways that people think about sports betting bankroll management, but the most common way, the most popular way is the Kelly criterion. So what we can do actually is if I go to my positive EV settings in Odds Jam, I can so I can enter my Kelly calculator settings. So all you need to enter to use the Kelly calculator is keep the multiplier at one to start is you just need to enter your bankroll. So let's say my sports betting bankroll starts out at, I don't know, whatever, $400. And you just hit save changes. That would be a very low bankroll to get into sports betting. But let's say that, you know, that's what you have available. That's what you're willing to lose and put into sports betting to give profitable sports betting a shot. So you would put in $400 here, and then we could go back to the positive expected value page. Is what the Kelly Criterion Calculator takes into account is how profitable a bet is, right? So the Kelly Calculator takes into account how profitable a bet is when it tells you how much to bet. So then we're back on the positive expected value page. What I can do is I can hit this calculator right here, and Odds Jam will automatically tell me how much I should be betting on this, which is 1585. According to my bankroll, I should be, or according to the Kelly calculator, I should be risking 3.96% of my sports betting bankroll on this wager, which is 1585, right? So if we went to FanDuel, I could place 1585 on this specific bet, and boom, we place that bet, you know, in line with what the Kelly criterion would tell us to do. So what the whole goal of the Kelly, you know, calculator is, what the whole goal is, it takes into account how profitable a bet is. So the odds you're getting versus the percentage of the time you're actually winning in your bankroll to maximize your returns while minimizing your risk. Obviously, it's very hard to make money sports betting if you're only betting $1 at a time. So if your bankroll is, let's say $10,000. So if we go back to my positive expected value settings, and we go here and we put in, you know, whatever, let's say my bankroll starts out at 10,000 or even 15,000 and we go back, we go back to the plus EV page, we click on this calculator. This bet is good, right? Pinnacle is only giving you plus 201 on Mariners minus 1.5. You can get plus 245 on FanDuel, right? The sharpest bookmaker in the world is only giving you plus 201 on Mariners minus 1.5, you can get plus 245. This is clearly a good betting opportunity. It's something that we want action on. So we can actually scroll down, right? You can see, where is it? Mariners minus 1.5. It's plus 220 on every other book, plus 200 on Caesars. We're getting great value on FanDuel. You're getting plus 245. So the question is, how much should we be betting? So now, if I go to the Kelly calculator, it's going to tell me, okay, Put, your same, put the same fraction of your bankroll on this bet, 3.96%, but this time it's telling me, you know, to wager $594. So I can go to FanDuel, I can, you know, try to place that bet. So if I go to alternate run lines, I can try to place 594, and it's only going to give me 5150. So again, the Kelly calculator, it's not perfect because sportsbooks do apply limits to certain bettors, especially those who are profitable. So a lot of times you won't even be able to bet the full amount that the Kelly calculator tells you to do. A lot of times your bankroll will be too big. So you should just place the bet for as much money as you can get. Um, so we place a little more on the Mariners. So again, how does this work, right? The no vague fair odds, if we take Pinnacle's market, the market from the sharpest bookmaker in the world, we put it into a no vague fair odds calculator. We'll see that according to Pinnacle, again, the sharpest sports book, the fair odds 
on Mariners minus 1.5 run line should be roughly plus 215. Once you remove the juice, you remove the VIG, you get fair odds of plus 215, which has an implied win percentage of 31.8%, which we've discussed in other videos. Um, so the fair odds on this are plus 214. We're getting plus 245, so it's clearly a profitable betting opportunity. It's clearly something we want action on, but the question is just how much? How much should we bet on this so our risk of going broke and having a really bad losing streak you know, isn't too high, but we're also maximizing our returns? That's what the Kelly calculator does for you. So again, we see it'll tell me how much to bet for specific opportunities if I just click on this calculator. It will take into account how profitable the bet is. So if we scroll down, right, this bet's only profitable by 2%. So it's telling me, okay, only put 1.92% of your bankroll on this specific wager. Whereas if I go back to the top and I look at some of these more profitable bets, it tells me put 3.55% percent of your bankroll because this is a better bet. It's more profitable. And ultimately that's what the Kelly calculator does is all you need to do is find the fair win percentage from either a sports betting model or removing the VIG and finding the fair odds from Pinnacle and Bookmaker, the two sharpest sports books. All you need is the odds you're getting. So let's say I'm placing a bet at plus 100 odds, put in Kelly multiplier one, I'm placing a bet at plus 100 odds, you know, and if according to Pinnacle, you should be winning this bet 53% of the time, or according to your sports betting model, whatever, that means that the fraction of your bankroll that should go on this specific bet is 6%. Now, if you're only winning it 52% of the time, you should be placing 4% of your bankroll on this bet. If you're winning this bet 56% of the time, you should be placing 12% of your bankroll on this specific wager, right? If you're only winning 50% of the time, that would be fair odds. You would be breaking even. You don't want to place any money on this bet. It's not a good bet. It's a fair bet. And then, of course, if you're only winning this bet 40% of the time, you're losing money. You don't want to put anything on this bet, right? The Kelly calculator will spit out a negative number. And if you're getting a negative number, you definitely don't want to place the bet. So again, that's the Kelly calculator. That's how you manage a sports betting bankroll. Arbitrage is how you can grow your sports betting bankroll in a risk-free way. And again, um, you know, there are some flaws, I would say, to the Kelly calculator and having this be the sole method of managing your sports betting bankroll. The first one we just saw, so we can see this line is ripping towards the Mariners. Pinnacle's all the way down to plus 198. So this plus 245 is a direct ARB to Pinnacle. Like this is something we clearly want action on. The sharpest bookmaker is only giving you plus 198. We can get plus 245, which is a direct ARB to Pinnacle, which has athletics plus 1.5 minus 243. Definitely a bet we want action on. The expected value of this bet to the zero big line from Pinnacle is 10.89%, right? The very profitable bet. But the thing is, is like if my bankroll is fifteen thousand dollars, I'm not going to be able to on my account at least on my you know heavily limited FanDuel account. I'm not going to be able to bet six hundred and sixty six dollars in thirty one cents. It's not going to happen. So that's one of the main flaws of using the Kelly criterion to manage your sports betting bankrolls. A lot of times you're not even going to be able to bet as much as the calculator is telling you to bet. So. What a lot of people do is they use the Kelly calculator as a basis of managing their sports betting bankroll and how much they should be wagering and wagering on specific, you know, bets, and then they just tailor it down. So like, for example, maybe, you know, you place $500 on this, you're betting in increments of $250. So you're betting $250, 500, 750, 1000 in whatever the Kelly criterion is closest to is the amount you place, right? It looks a little strange to go onto a book and bet 666.31. That sports book will probably think that you're smart and you're using a Kelly criterion calculator or you are arbitrage betting, right? Because you're using weird numbers that aren't rounded. So what most people would do in this case is like, you know, just bet like $700 or bet $650. Bet something that's a little less sketchy or just round down to standard bet sizes, right? Like 500, 750, $1,000. Um, so the last thing I will say is like, you know, this is kind of what we're talking about here. Like if we're getting plus 150 odds and we're staking $100, 
the our profit if we win and therefore the expected value of the bet varies based on our win percentage and this win percentage can come from the no vague fair odds at pinnacle sportsbook or bookmaker sportsbook from your own sports betting model whatever this is what you believe the true win percentage for your bet is and you're getting plus 150 odds on every bet so obviously if we're winning a bet 50 percent of the time at plus 150 odds our expected value is going to be 150 so our profit if we win times 50 percent minus a hundred dollars our stake times the amount of time we're losing, which will be 50%. So the expected value of this bet, for every $100 I'm betting, I'm getting an expected return. My edge is 25%. That's very high. That's not necessarily realistic, but that would be a very profitable bet. So if you were able to find an opportunity that was that good, you would want to bet more money on it than something that you know, let's say has a win percentage of 42.5% and only has an expected edge or mathematical profit margin of 6.25%. So again, the general basis of the Kelly criterion is depending on the implied win percentage of the bet and the expected value of your wager. In other words, how profitable your wager is, you should be tailoring your bet sizes. So maybe what you can do what some other people do is they'll just say, okay, if a bet is good between, you know, one and 3%, I'll put a hundred dollars on it. If it's three to 6%, I'll bet, you know, $250 on it. If it's six to 9%, you know, I'll bet $400 on it. Is you can set standard bet sizes and just determine from the odd jam plus EV page, like, okay, what bucket is this falling into and how much should I be placing on each specific bet? This is kind of known as unit-based sports betting or unit sizing in sports betting. And it's just having a standard bet size, let's say, you know, $100 is one unit, and then tailoring how much you're betting based on how profitable the bet is. So I'd be betting 2.5 units. If a bet is profitable by 3.6%, I'd be betting four units. If the bet is profitable by six to 9%. And that's a great way to manage your money in sports betting, right? Is like, you want to place more on bets that are more profitable. So this bet would pro probably fall into your highest category, plus 245 versus plus 198 on Pinnacle. And you'd want to place your highest tier wager on this specific bet. But something like this, you know, this plus 104, that's profitable by 2%, you know, that shouldn't necessarily fall into your highest tier bucket. Maybe you even have one that's like, you know, less than one per, you know, this would fall into the $100 unit size. So um, again, the purpose of this video was to help you better manage your money, better manage your sports betting bankroll. As always, if you have questions about how to make money sports betting, how to win at sports betting, um, how to manage your bankroll, what sports books you should sign up for in your specific location, you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, and thank you so much for your time.